field wire lines are always passed under a bridge or culvert if one is available where a team has to cross a highway or a railroad. At a point of special construction like this, the men do only as much as is necessary to enable the rest of the team who are following along the line to complete the job. In this way, no time is lost in establishing communication. One team member pulls off enough wire to make the crossing. He tags the line. Other members prepare to pass the wire through the culvert. The lines are cut and the tagged ends are given to the other men. The ends from the reel are taken to the other side of the road where they are prepared for splicing. The wire is passed through the culvert. At the far side, the lines are spliced together again. Meanwhile, equipment is replaced. When the splices are completed, the lines are tied to a stake and the truck moves on. An overhead must never be made over a railroad because of the danger to persons on top of railroad cars. When there is no bridge or culvert under a railroad, the lines are tagged, cut, and passed under the rails. The wire is then spliced together again. While the wire is being spliced, one member of the crew digs a trench from the track to the edge of the improved area. He places the wire in the trench. The lines are tied to a stake at the far side. When there is no bridge or culvert at a road crossing, Enough wire should be reeled off to make an overhead tie at least 14 feet high. A main highway should have a clearance of 18 feet. The extra wire is held by tying the lines to a support. At times, the quickest and easiest way to cross a secondary dirt road is to bury the wire. Extra wire is reeled off. This extra wire is to replace the buried line in case it is broken. A trench is dug straight across the road. This trench should be at least six inches deep. The wire, which has been tied to a stake, is laid loosely in the trench. When the unit comes to a stream, enough wire is reeled off to make an overhead crossing. This wire must have good insulation and contain no splices.
At a stream crossing, wire is unreeled and tied in place the same as at a road crossing. In the meantime, while the unit truck is laying the wire, the team members who were left back at the command post follow up for special work. They make sure that the wire is off the road, that it lies close to the ground and does not hang over obstacles. However, the team's main job is to finish the special construction work started by the other men at points where the wire might be damaged. At the culvert, the slack is pulled out of the line. At points where the insulation is apt to wear off, the wire is protected by friction tape. The line is tied to a stake at a high point. This keeps it from coming in contact with the water. The tags are placed about a foot from the stake. The same procedure is followed on the other side of the culvert. At the railroad track, the men fasten the wire and bury it. To complete the overhead tie, the men put on their line equipment. The lines are carried up the trees. They are first tied on the far side of the road by a loop knot. When one knot is tied, the soldier on the other side of the road takes up the slack and ties it in there. The line should not come in contact with branches which sway in the wind. The job is finished by tying in at the base of the tree. When the tie is completed, high trucks can pass clear of the lines. If there are no trees or telephone poles, lance poles can be used for an overhead. They can be lashed to a support or a guide with field wire. Where the trench was dug across the road, the linemen fasten the wire and bury it. Ordinarily, a stream is crossed by an overhead tie, just as in the case of a road crossing, except that the tie need only be high enough to clear the water at all times. While the team members are following up with special construction work, the unit truck arrives at its destination. Enough wire is reeled off to complete any special construction that may be necessary. The wire is tied into a support. A call is made back over the wire to see that the line is in working condition. The tagged lines are then given to a member of the operating detail who ties into the switchboard. After the installation, a final test is made over the entire line. If the operating detail had not yet arrived, a telephone would be attached and a member of the team would be left at this point
to inform the detail as to the location of the lines. 